Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Psalm 105 is our focus. We're going to look at verses 4 and 5 this evening. Um, the writer neglected to put his name, so we don't know who this is contribute to, but I like it when they do that. I think I said it before, because when we don't have a name, we, we know God wrote it. You know what I'm saying? Even if David wrote it, we know God wrote it. So that's the good thing about that. Psalm 105, verses 4 and 5. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. And thank you, Lord, in just the light of it. We pray that you would just give us, give us illumination of our souls on the importance of, of seeking you out. Like we did in worship just now, Lord, we sought your face. We sought your hand. So, Lord, just show us through your word what it is, how we, with your help and grace, seek you completely. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Gosh, I want that song we sung, uh, Jesus Be the Center, to kind of like be the, the soundtrack to, to what we're looking at tonight. I want you to be hearing that in your spirit and your soul. Because that, that's everything that we want to look at in these two verses is, is pursuing Jesus, seeking Jesus, is the word it says here, seeking him as the center, as the only focus, letting God be sought out, seeking him out completely. At first, this, this study, I kind of entitled this study at first, seeing God completely, seeing him, having vision of him completely. But, but the word talks about something that we're to do, and that's to seek him. And I want to stay loyal to the word, to the word. Seeking the Lord. Nobody would disagree that it's, it's prime, man. It's a big deal. It, it has something to do with our responsibility that God has given us, not only responsibility, but our part in our relationship with him will, will solely be based upon how much do I go after him? How much do you go after him? How much you pursue him in the various ways? Those various ways are, could, could easily be countless. They could easily be so many we couldn't number. But, but we did one tonight, and that's to worship him. Worship is, a, is, is just that. It is a seeking of the Lord. It's seeking him and affirming him in all that he is, praising him, thanking him for the things that he gives and the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. But also that seeking would come and be, be described under the fact that you and I have spiritual disciplines that we are to do, that we are to, to uh, have consistent in our lives. That's why they're disciplined. And that would come like prayer, no doubt. Prayer would be one. It's very important that you and I are talking to God, that you and I are giving God opportunity to work in our lives. And we have to be convinced that the very fact is unless, unless I believe that if I don't, he won't, then, then prayer is not going to be really important in my life. And I hope you see scripturally that that is the truth. He is given prayer as the, the mandate, the way of having him intervene. And Jesus gives us the greatest outline for prayer. And we call it the Lord's Prayer. His his inscription on how we should pray. And every one of those things in that, in that list of prayer focuses, like give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, and, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. There's just a bunch of things that we need to be praying for. All of those are, are essential to ask God for. And we need to be asking him for that. And praise God by his grace, he brings those things into our lives. Like Rufus was talking about. Having, having someone pray for you and you also praying for yourself. So prayer would definitely be one. And, and, and also pursuing God in his word. Nobody would doubt that. That's very important. That's a great responsibility in seeking God. We, we seek out his word. We, we're going to look, Lord willing, when we get to Psalm 119, it's all dedicated to, over 100 verses are dedicated to seeking God's word. Finding God's word as more than just written on a page, but they become spiritual food. They become spiritual substance in our lives. 
And, and David will, will describe the word over and over again in various ways. And he would say that he seeks God's word. He goes after God's word. There would be other disciplines too, but the, the list can go on and be very numerous. But I, I don't think you're ignorant too how you're to seek the Lord, how you're to go after him. But finding what we find when we seek him, I think a lot of times we forget. And it's from Amos chapter 5, verse 4. It's on the screen. Amos chapter 5, verse 4 says this, For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel. He's not only saying this to the house of Israel, he's saying this to you and me too, because we have the word of God. God says these words to us. Seek me and live. Seek me and live. God says, if you, if you seek me, if you, you move after me, if you reach for me, he says, you're going to find life. You're going to live. Now, we know it as the life that we have eternally with Jesus. Yes, we have that. But we also have life now. There's one thing that our souls are desiring, and that's, that's zoe, life. This Greek word is zoe. It's life. It's, it is quality. It's a substance of life. It's a life not only sustained. It's not just us living, but it's how we're living. And there's a substance of life. And everybody goes after that. I, I, I'm, I'm fully convinced that anytime you and I are tempted to go after something else to give us what Jesus has for us, that's when we get in trouble. That's when we get addicted to, to drugs and or alcohol or, or all kind of things because we're looking for something that only Jesus can deliver, and that's life. And the promise is here very quickly, very, very, only in a few words. Seek me and live, God says. If you seek me, you will find, you will find substance, significance of life, and it's in a relationship. It's based upon the, the love that God has for you and I and his love that is everlasting, unwavering love. To, to find that connection with God in seeking him. The Old Testament would say, God would say this, if you seek me, you will find me. And here's a condition. When you search, when you seek with all of your heart. That's not a God who, who's insecure. He puts that word in there. No, it's just the way it really works. It's only going to work when we, as the title of this Bible study, we seek him completely. It's with all of our hearts. We will find that life. The, the times that you and I will struggle in this world, no matter what, whether it's the fear of, of a virus that's going around, or maybe you're in temporary unemployment, or you got to have a CAT scan tomorrow morning, whatever it may be. Anytime you and I will be overwhelmed by the, those things and, and the many other things that we can be overwhelmed by. The only time we will be overwhelmed is, is when I'm not letting that life that he offers here in Amos be a part of my soul. I, I'm really convinced of that. I've experienced that, and you have to. You have to. You found out that God is the one that gives you that life, that substance of life. Seek me and live, God says. You'll have life in seeking him. How are we to seek the Lord? That's the two verses that we see here. And, and I believe they're right here. And I love it when the word of God just clearly tells us. Psalm 105, verse 4 and 5 tell us. There, there, there are six things we see here. First of all, in seeking the Lord, number one, verse 4, we're first of all to seek the Lord. Those three first words seek the Lord. It means just generally seek Him. It also means the very point is seeking Him completely. Letting Him be the complete sought after we're going after, not, not mixing things. The Bible talks about that. Jesus said it this way, you can't, you can't serve or you can't be loyal to two masters. You, you got to have one. And, and He was making the very point is that you and I, with God's help, need to Make God our, our master. Can't serve to. Can't serve to. It doesn't work that way. James would say this. A double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. A person is going back and forth. 
Okay, yeah, I'm giving God it all, but I'm also believing this, and I'm going back and forth. He says a double-minded person like that will be unstable in everything they do. And we need God to strike the, the boy, the, our lives and our hearts to see and to have and seek God completely, to seek the Lord, to seek him out, to seek him out in, in all that he has and all that he is. Now, he's going to say these first three words in verse four to seek the Lord. And then he's going to talk about the things we need to seek in God. And we'll look at those in a second. But let, let me show you some in 1 Corinthians 2.10. Look there, would you? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. This is in context of verse 9 of 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And the context is, is talking about how you and I, that, that we can't even search out how vast God's love is. We just really can't know. Verse 9 is quoting from the Old Testament word for word about that, that we just can't search. Our minds can't phantom. There's just no way of us really perceiving the richness of God and his love toward us. But, in, but verse 10, but God, look what he says here, has revealed them to us. How have they been revealed? Look what it says here, through his spirit. And, and here's the reason you and I need the Holy Spirit helping us seek God. For the Spirit searches, look what it says there, all things, completely, all things, the entire things of God, completely God. Yes, look what it says here, the deep things of God, things that you and I don't see. We, we, we almost hardly see the surface, let alone what is deep. So when we talk about seeking the Lord, when we talk about seeking God completely, you and I need the Holy Spirit to help us seek, because he seeks all things. Yes, affirmative, the deep things of God. We need the Holy Spirit to carry us in this seeking uh, uh, discipline, in seeking the Lord. I, I'm not left to myself. You're not left to yourself to do it on your own. It, it, it doesn't work that way. That, that would be totally unfair. <laughs> and God is fair. God is just. If you and I were left to it, to seek him as we can. No, we have help from God. And that's from the Spirit of God to do that. It's one of the things that are easily neglected in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. And also the benefits of having him in us is this one right here. Is knowing that he, he causes us to go after and see those things in verse 9 that we normally wouldn't see. Reveal, the word is reveal there. Reveal those things. Because he searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So seek the Lord. And now he begins this list, what we need to be seeking. The first one he says here in verse 4 is, and his strength, to seek the strength of God. This is the whole context of all of verse, excuse me, of Psalm 105. Psalm 105 is dealing with the, the faithfulness of the Lord and how God is faithful to Israel. Now he's faithful to, to be in their God and be in there with them. And this strength, to seek his strength, is to seek two things. The power that he dis, that's displayed and the boldness that he declares. The, the powerful or the power that is displayed and the boldness of God. Boldness, not, not, not necessarily in the way we, we interpret boldness as being cocky, cocky. No, it's God being up front, up front, seeing him as the one that's up front. And he's up front without no apology, no apology. There's a, there's a boldness. You and I are, are called to go toward God and his grace, his throne of grace, that we're to do it with boldness. Not cocky, not prideful, not arrogant, but we're to go with confidence, a, a bold confidence knowing that God wants to help us in the time of need. Here we see his strength, and we need to seek his strength, his power, and his boldness. Now we seek this strength, our power. We seek it to, to recognize it. We seek it out to recognize it. And it's to look and see God working in a situation, his strength, his power. Power also his strength also is power. Power means his move, that God moves some things, that things are moved. 
In the New Testament, there's different meanings of the word power, like the word dynamic. It's a word that we got. They didn't translate it that way. But, but we see it in our translations as a dynamic. It's something beyond ourselves. Something beyond ourselves. And you and I are to seek God's power because his power is beyond ourselves. It's beyond ourselves. It is something that you and I do not have. We do not possess, but he possesses. it. Now I go after and to see that power, to see that power. Jesus said, Lord's Prayer again. Jesus said, he says, you don't have to end the prayer there, but you need to say things like this. To you be all the glory and the power kingdom, the power, and the glory, Jesus said. The power. You be the power. You be the influence of mood. You be the, again, power displayed and boldness declared. You be that kind of power that comes out and has that, that kind of power displayed. Psalm 93, verse 1 is on the screen. Look what it says here. We, we talked about this just recently. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. And in his reigning, look what it says here, he is clothed with majesty. That is that's another word or a synonym to glory. There, there is a majesty and there's a glory that only he displays. It says here, the Lord is clothed. It, it, and that's, it, it makes this point again. He's clothed. But look what it says next. He is girded himself with strength. He's girded himself or he is, he's tightened himself. He's He's drawn up his clothes with, girded to draw up, to fasten. Same word of fastening, almost a belt, you know, similar to a belt. We're, we're, we see being girded, our loins of our mind says in the New Testament that you and I are to do that. It means to fasten up, tighten up. Now he is fastened up or tightened up. He's girded himself with strength, with strength. And, and it's important for you and I to recognize. You and I to recognize that. Now he gives, he gives the primary way that we're to recognize that God, God has strength. And look what he says here in these, these understanding. Surely the world is established so it, that it cannot be moved. He says God is, is, is girded himself in strength and surely, for sure, without question, the world is established so it cannot be moved. And, and it's about it's letting you and I see beyond even our own lives, but look into, my gosh, the, the universe and notice, man, God's holding the world in the universe. He's holding it steady there. The world's not on its own. He's not, he didn't spin it like a top and he walked away. No, no, he's, he's holding the earth. The, the child song is true. He really does have the whole world in his hand. And he's got you and me and brother, sister and in his hands. And there's a holding of that, a holding of that. Now, 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 now to approach this in understanding and application, you would understand why there would be a, a sense of, of denouncing, denouncing that man would have the ability to, to pop the earth off its axles in some way. And, and we have a, a society now that does with that, whether it be, whether it be being concerned that we're going to pop the ozone layer out or something like that. My gosh, I'm glad we serve a big enough guy that he won't let you and I pop the ozone layer out. And, and, and for someone to think that, he, that, that, that we could kind of just slaps his face and makes him look like he's not in charge or he's not in control or he's not doing just what Psalm 93 says he's doing. He's established the world. He's established the world. Hallelujah for that. I'm not saying we ought to be dirty and go around and just, you know, mess up everything in the world. And I'm not saying that, but I'm saying we, we, ought, to, we, ought, we ought to be careful we don't denounce his strength. Denounce his strength. I, I, I easily and subtly but very dangerously will do that when, when I start thinking that, that we can intrude upon his strength. No, he is in charge and he is in control, and he's girded with strength. He's girded with strength. What a blessing to know that. Next thing it says here, in the verse 4, seek his face evermore. Seek his face evermore. 
It, it means to seek his countenance. It means to seek how, how he's looking at you is what it means. It means to seek the face of God, to, to be able to look at his face and determine how he is looking at you, at you. This is, this is the intimate relationship and a practice that you and I need to move to with the Holy Spirit's help and to understand God's love and affection and care and faithfulness in every one of his attributes. You and I being able to not, not see literally with our eyes, but to be able to be convinced and affirmed in our hearts that God favors us, favors us. It, it is something that can't be done necessarily corporately in a group or is something that we have to have individually. And it's important to have these regular looks at God. It's important to be seeking not only his strength, but now seek his face. Seek how he's looking. And it's his look of love. His look of love. That's the first thing you ought to be able to, to, to experience, knowing that God looks at you with love. And, and, and to see Jesus and how much he displayed love. And Jesus said this way, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Everything that I'm doing, Jesus said, the Father is doing through me. He's doing it too. And his compassion, his, his, uh, just his love and all that that he's giving, his love. Look at love. Can you see, here it is, can you see that God loves you? If you don't, if I don't, man, we struggle then. We struggle big time when I don't see that. If I, I don't care how much money I can have in the bank or what kind of promotions I'm getting at the job. It doesn't matter. If I'm going to be insecure if I don't see the face of God's love. Not only the face of his love, but the face of his mercy, his compassion. We talk about that a lot because we should. It's, it's in the Bible a lot. Also, the face of his faithfulness. We sung about that last Sunday morning, that he's ever faithful. And do I see the face of his faithfulness? And then the face, I say this one for last because this is the least likable one. <laughs> and that would be the face of his correction when, when he's not pleased. Now, now, God not being pleased, it doesn't mean he is disgusted or dissatisfied with you or me. But, but there is a a sensitivity that you and I should have to know that we are walking worthy of the Lord. In a couple of weeks, we're going to get back into the book Colossians on Sunday morning, and that's going to be stated in Colossians, that you and I should, should really work at, put, put effort in having a walk, having a life, a walk, a life, that's worthy of the Lord. It's worthy of what God would want. That should be a clear, conscious ambition for every Christian. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to please him. That's what the Bema seat of Christ is going to be all about. The judgment seat, Bema, judgment seat. That you and I, once we leave this world, we're going to stand before Jesus individually, not collectively, individually. And the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 3 says it, that we're going to stand before the Lord and we're going to give account, not for our sins, but for what was expected from us and did we deliver or not. And, and there will be rewards given. And it won't be spankings given or stuff like that. And one of the good things about this too is I'm so glad that no one else is going to be there. You ain't going to be there when I stand before Jesus. It's a private meeting. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, preachers would say, everybody's going to see how ugly you really was. You know? And in those days, we had, you know, we had projectors. You're gonna, God's going to bring out this big projector with this big reel, and it's going to have Thomas on the reel. And everybody's going to be, man, I'm so glad you ain't going to be there. It's between me and Jesus. <laughs> and you glad I ain't going to be yours either. But it is going to be a so, obviously a sobering time. Not a time for Jesus to just get back at us. No, it's just going to be how serious life was meant to be. And now we should take it serious now. I should take it serious now. And I should be sensitive to that when I'm moving in some area of life, I need to be sensitive to his look of correction. 
Sure, his love, his mercy, his faithfulness, for sure. And the list can go on from there. That we look at the Lord, we see his face. But what about the face of him saying, Thomas, I want better for you in this. This is not what I want for you. And, and that should be something that would move us, something that would, would draw us and surrender to his will. I, I would hope it, it, it would. I would hope it would. Moving on, verse 5. Remember his marvelous works he has done. So we're to seek his face forevermore. We are to seek him. We're also just to seek out his strength. But also in seeking him, verse 5, we're to remember his marvelous works he has done. Uh, the, the power of recall, you know, the power of activity that we get in recall is all through the Bible. Look, it's, it's on the screen, Psalm 143, verse 5. David says this, I remember the days of old. I remember the past. I meditate on your works. I muse or I ponder on the works of your hand. So he, he, he meditates on God's works. He muses or ponders on the works of his hand. And in doing that, he's remembering the days of old. He's remembering when God was active in his life. So in seeking God, there is this, this remembering him. It's this letting recall come into my life and into your life. I, I believe it without a doubt that, that when someone turns away from the Lord, when someone embraces the Lord and then just turns away, I, I believe in every sense of the case, it's a person who has forgotten how, how great God has been in their lives. I, I, just, I just believe that. I, I believe that, that that's going to cause any, anyone, any of us, to turn away from a, from a relationship and a walk with Jesus would be when, when I don't do this verse 5 point, when I don't remember his marvelous works that he has done. And so I seek out and recall what he's done in, in my life, what he's done in your life. We seek that out and recall, and we find that being very sustaining in our lives now. It, it is good, and it's okay when it comes to God to look back. Paul talked about things that he doesn't look back at anymore, and he has a list of things like you and I have a list of things. And there are some things we shouldn't look back. The blood of Jesus has washed that away. The blood of Jesus has cleansed that. Not only the sin, but he's cleansed our conscience too. And we can move forward. But when it comes to, like David, when he faced Goliath, David told Saul, King Saul, I killed a lion and a bear not too long ago. So this Philistine won't be that big of a problem. David David searched back and did just what he said we should do here in Psalm 143, is that he recalled a lion and a bear that he had killed. And God had given him that victory. God had given him that victory. Two more things. We're to seek not only his marvelous works, but look at the next point there in verse 5. His wonders. His wonders. Those are things that he does that is wonderful. It is a wonderful thing. Now, everything he does sure would be wonderful, but there are some things that would exceed and, and would become really, really a big deal. And, and it's the kind of thing that, that we remember when we testify to other people and share with other people about the goodness of God. We, we'll bring that one up. We'll bring that wonderful, that wonders that he's done. I, think, I, I, don't, I just wonder, my gosh, how he did it. Not necessarily how he did it, but why he probably did it because of his great marvelous grace and mercy and love for our lives. And, and it blows, blows our minds, if you would. We should have a lot of things in our lives that blows our minds about God, that God has done. And, and to recall his wonders in seeking him out and, and to recall what he's done. We seek out again to recognize and remember his wonders. We, we, we seek out we seek out and recall to recognize the wonders that he's brought in our lives. And that is, that is a conscious thing to do. That is a conscious thing to do. The last one here in the verse 5. And he says here, and seek also the judgments of his mouth. The judgments of his mouth. That is the statements of, of the Bible. The Bible. Now, I connect that with something that Jesus said, and he was quoting from Deuteronomy when he said it. 
is that man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And you have a Bible, whether it's a book form or whether you're reading it on your phone or your tablet, it is the word of God. And that is a word that, that you and I are to seek out. And we need to see it as, because we, we see it as various things. But here in the verse, it says, the judgments of his mouth. The judgments of his mouth. It is things that he is that he has made a ruling in. A ruling in. I am I'm waiting for the city of Virginia Beach to recognize I would make a good juror, but I'm already three weeks down. They ain't asked me yet. I only got two more weeks to go and then I'm out. But I'm hoping they'll let me go. I mean, I'm going to look for a ruling. And there's a ruling of something that's going to be passed down from a judge, and this is how it's going to be. Now, God's the greatest judge. He's the greatest judge in, in, in life. He's the greatest judge in the universe. And there is a judgment of his mouth, and we have it. It's the word of God. And you and I need to be seeking out that word. Because in that word, in that word that we seek out, we find out, first of all, who God is. Who God is. Second, we find out where God stands on, on any given situation. First of all, who he is in nature, in person. But second of all, where he stands on, on issues, on, on areas of life. Then thirdly, what God wants. The word of God is very clear in giving us what God wants. And then lastly, we seek out his judgments because we find out how God moves, how he moves. We always think we know how he moves, but his word tells us how he moves and how he is active in our lives, in our lives. And, and I close with this. He, he wants to be active in our lives. He wants to be active, but, 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 I'm, but we're going to need to seek him. And if we seek him, we will find him. You'll find him faithful in seeking him. And I'm also blessed to, to know this, that those who seek the Lord, the Bible says, they won't be ashamed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't like being ashamed. But seeking out God, you'll never be ashamed. You'll never be ashamed. Seek him out. Seek, seek out. Seek him. Seek his strength. Seek his marvelous works. Seek his wonders. Go after God. Go after him and everything that he is. And when you seek him, like Amos said to us tonight, you'll find life. You and I will find the life that is in him. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm done. And it's early. That's cool. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much, Lord, for just your, your giving word to us and your spirit that affirms it to us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You you can be the center. You are the center, but we need your help to seek you out as the center. So just like that song we sung, Lord, we ask that you would be the center. That, that all that we will seek will be you, only you, completely you. Help us to look to you and, and understand you are strong. Help us to seek out your strength, your power your boldness. Help us, Lord, to look to you, to, to be what all that we seek after. Forgive us when we seek after things that don't deliver, that don't supply, but help us just to trust you. And every day of our lives, every morning, may we just re-seek you again and go after you in our lives. I pray for all those who are making this rededication to you right now. Oh, let them know that you receive them. You love them. You are faithful. And you will take them in. And you will give them the ability to search all things of God. Yes, the deep things of God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit and for the help that we get through, through you, through him. Now may God bless us and keep us. May he make his face. Yeah, his face. Because we're, we're supposed to seek his face. Lord, may we 
May we experience your face and how you're looking at us. May you show grace upon us and be gracious unto us. And may God give us his peace, his, his, his everlasting peace, his perfect peace in a world that is so unstable. May we find our rest only in Jesus. It's our prayer. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week. Let's stand.